fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Hurry, big fellow! Hail, Silver! Not unlike any other army post on the frontier, rumors, counter-rumors, and idle speculation were all a part of daily life at Fort Apache. Hey, Mike, did you hear the latest? No, what is it? Deep truth moving out first thing in the morning. Yeah, who says so? I don't know. Corporal Duncan told me. Yep. Deep troop is moving out. That's what Corporal Duncan was telling Maloney. I don't believe it. Well, neither do I, but this is the army, brother, and that means anything can happen. All you yellow legs can take this or leave it. Sergeant Swartz was just telling me that Maloney told him that Duncan heard orders came through for D-Troop to move out. Well, Duncan heard? Oh. How does he well, know? the same way he knows everything else. Like the time the colonel came out from Washington, or that day they shipped in new recruits. Duncan just here. Funny thing is, he's right about half the time. Yeah. What I'd like to know is, why does Corporal Duncan always hear... And evidently, the same question had occurred to Captain Rolfe. That's why he sent for a lanky young non-com named Duncan. Corporal Duncan reporting, Captain. Oh, yes, Corporal. At ease. Yes, sir. Corporal, I wonder if you can tell me what's new here at the fort. Anything unusual going to happen? I, I don't understand, sir. That's strange. According to several officers and men, you seem to have a fairly reliable source of advance information. On what, Captain? Oh, various things. Orders from Washington, advice from the colonel at Fort Blucher, how many mules are being shipped out of El Paso. And... Oh, you mean rumors. <laughs> I guess I'm no different than anybody else, Captain. You know, you pick up a word here, a word there. Troopers have got to have something to talk about. Yes, so they... yes, I know. But in your particular case, my curiosity was aroused. During the past few weeks, I've paid close attention... You... You mean to me, sir? To the fact that you spend some portion of your free time each day outside the telegraph room. Let us say, uh, within earshot. Well, is there anything wrong with that? Oh, nothing, except it proves you can read Morse code. And that's where your advance information comes from. I'm sorry, Captain. I, I guess I didn't realize what I was doing. In the future, I'll keep my ears and my mouth shut. That won't be necessary, Corporal, because your transfer papers just came in this morning... Fortunately, they reached me by mail. 
Transfer? Where am I being transferred? To the Signal Corps out of Fort Blucher. You've been assigned to Cedar Creek Station. But, but I don't want to go back to Pound and Brass. That's why I enlisted in the cavalry. The Signal Corps needs an operator at Cedar Creek Station. You're the man. It's all settled. Get your pay from the paymaster and leave here in the morning. Check with Frank Prescott, operator at Stone Bluff, on your way to Cedar Creek. Those are orders, Corporal. Yes, sir. Do you mind if I ask just one thing before I go, Captain? Oh, what is it? Is D Troop really moving out in the morning? That's right. I've received word from Chief Black Bear. Apparently, he and Owlhead, that crazy medicine man of his, have decided to call off their Apache raiders and sign a treaty of peace. We've arranged a meeting for tomorrow afternoon at Dry Meadow. I'm taking D Troop along in the event they spring some kind of Apache trick. But I won't be riding with you. You'll be riding, Corporal. Just after we leave, you'll be riding in the opposite direction, toward Cedar Creek. And don't forget to stop off at Stone Bluff Station. I... Yes, sir. On a lonely trail, several miles to the east, and not far from Stone Bluff Station, the Lone Ranger and Tonto pull their horses to a halt. Oh, 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 Strange how those three Apache braves disappeared, Tonto. They had their sign just a few minutes ago. Ah, Apache plenty hard to trail. Evidently, they belong to Black Bear's camp. If they're heading for that rendezvous with a cavalry troop at Dry Meadow, well, everything's all right. But if, on the other keep hand... Black Bear, him keep word. Owl head, medicine man, him no good. Yes, that's what I mean. These braves we're trailing are some of Owl Head's renegades... Well, at least they're heading west. We may pick up their sign again. Ah. We'll follow this telegraph line for a few miles, and then I... Otto, that ridge up ahead. Isn't that an Apache riding a Mustang? Ah. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, line's down. Busted right off next to the pole. Oh, uh, well, as long as I'm back to pounding brass, I might as well splice line breaks, too. Steady, boy. Lucky thing I'm packing a spare coil of wire. You wait right here, boy. Crop yourself some grass. I'll be back in a minute. Can't be so very far from Stone Bluff. Huh. If this line broke last night, why ain't Frank Prescott, or whatever his name is, out here fixing it? And it's a job like this. What the... Engine! Me was just a six gun. Left my car behind him in the saddle. Three of the red skin devils. I haven't got much of a chance, but I'll. Come on, Silver! More of them. No. That one must be an owl hoop. He's wearing a mask. That's right, Toto. Close in. The masked critter and one red skin chased the other three off. What kind oh, of a... Hold, 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 hold. Hold. Easy, steady, big fella. <clears throat> the soldier from the signal corps. Are you hurt, Corporal? Oh, thanks to you, I haven't got a scratch. Good. But what's the idea? I can't figure this out. How come an owl hoot like you and this uh, engine here turned on those oh, other... I'm not an outlaw. Now, vouch for my friend here. They've been trailing those three Apaches ever since sunrise. I still can't understand it. I'm sure glad you two happened along. I just stopped to fix this uh, line break... And those buzzards jumped me. Yes, that's their usual bait to trap one of you signal men. But look, mister, I don't know who you are, but don't line me up with the signal corps. I'm a regular yellow leg. D Troop, Fort Apache. Name is Duncan. Steve Duncan. Oh, glad to know you, Steve. You were lucky they got promoted to the signal corps. Ha! <laughs> lucky? Do you think I'd be on my way to pound brass in some deserted prairie station like Cedar Creek if I didn't have to? I'd be riding with D Troop right now to meet Black Bear. Oh. Always been my idea that a real soldier can fight just as well with a telegraph key as he can with a gun. Well, Tonto and I have to keep on the trail of those Apaches, silly big fella. <laughs> Adios, Corporal. Oh, wait, uh, wait a Come minute. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Well, I'll be... If I told the boys back at Fort Apache about this, they'd never believe me. Oh, this is Stone Bluff Station. 
Just the kind of broken down cracker box I expected. Cedar Creek's probably worse. Steady, boy. Well, maybe I can get some grub. Good afternoon, Corporal. You'll be wanting feed and water for your horse. Oh, good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Corporal Duncan, bound for Cedar Creek. Going to take over. Oh, glad to know you. I'm... Uh, Corporal uh, Frank Prescott around? I'm supposed to check in here on the way through. Well, uh, Frank isn't here right now. He, He's out hunting a line break. Oh, that's so? I just finished splashing the line west of here. Some uh, engines knocked it down. Oh, thanks. We appreciate it. Your leggings say you're with the cavalry, Corporal. Yeah. I'd give this leg to make what my leggings say the truth. I got a rotten deal. Shoved out of the cavalry. This is the last ride I'll be making till they muster me out of this flea-bitten outfit. Ha! The signal corps. Oh, is that so? Well, I mean no offense to your husband, ma'am. A telegraph station's a fine place for a broken-down old cavalryman getting simple. Back in D Troop, we used to say that an army telegrapher is just a trooper with his brains knocked out. Has it ever occurred to you that men in the signal corps might hold the same opinion? The other way around? If you want to feed your horse, you can carry it around. You're, you're sure your husband's not at home, ma'am? My brother is out repairing a break in the line. Oh, it's your brother. Well, I'll just step into the cabin. Oh, no, room. no, don't, please. Laura, Laura. What's, what's the trouble? Who's he? Over there on the bunk. Frank, my brother. Oh, sick, huh? Looks kind of done in. Of course he's sick, you fool. Even a stupid yellow leg like you should be able to see that. Too bad. How long has he been sick? Have you had a doctor? Frank's had fever for two weeks. Uh, and we don't want a doctor. No. No doctor. Please. Can't risk it. Well, uh, seems like I remember weather reports coming into the fort every day from this station. It was Laura. She handles the key as well as Does I it do. really make any difference whether Corporal Frank Prescott is a man or a woman temporarily? Not officially, I guess, but what would happen to the fort and everything beyond it if an engine raid should knock this station out? Three of those red-skinned devils jumped me not over two hours ago. It hadn't been for an outlaw, and he's... There's one single man to another. Don't report this. I'll be up again in a few days. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. If, if you're leaving now, Corporal, I'll walk outside with you. Why, why sure. I... So long, Frank. Goodbye, Corporal. You won't say anything, will you? What are you trying to do to your brother, Miss Laura? I was going to ask you the same question. Listen, I'm doctoring him with the same medicine the doctor used before. If he's reported sick, it means we lose the station. And that means more to him than anything in the world. <laughs> he must be local. He's proud of his job, that's all. Proud of the signal corps and all it represents. I'm watching him very carefully. Promise me you won't send a doctor until I ask for one. He wants it that way. Hmm... This is a loco situation for sure. Your brother risking his life to stay a brass pounder, and I'd do the same to get out. It doesn't make sense. But I suppose... Then you will keep our secret. Sure. And here's one you can keep from me. Don't tell anybody Steve Duncan kissed you. What? The troopers back at the fort would think I was going soft. Why, you... Steady, boy. You... Here, boy. You, you yellow leg... It was almost sundown when the Lone Ranger and Tonto, resting their mounts west of Stone Bluff, heard an ominous sound. Otto, that's an Apache war party. It's heading this way. Ah. Either Black Bear failed to make his treaty with the cavalry or he's on the war Apache path. Apache come on this trail plenty fast. We've got to beat him to that telegraph station at Stone Bluff. The operator can send for help. Ah. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Oh. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. With an Indian war party at their heels, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached Stone Bluff with very little time to spare. Oh, who's the Oh, 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 oh Steady, oh, easy. Oh, Listen, Tonto. Ah, uh, I can't hear them. Can you? When you not hear Apache, that's when they're most dangerous. I know it. That's what worries me. Steady, big fella. The only thing we can depend on is that they very seldom attack at night. Ah. Uh, they may surround the place and wait till daybreak. And what we do, Kimasabi? Leave the horses here at the back of the cabin. <laughs> Steady, Silver, easy. And find the telegrapher. Come on. Outlaws. A girl. I didn't expect to you find a girl. You didn't expect this gun either, but I'll show Wait, you that. Wait, put it down. We're not outlaws. Both of you. Better move back. Uh, you're making a mistake. But if you insist on shooting someone, I make a much better target when I'm close enough to... Oh! There. I hated to do that to get your gun. I hope I didn't hurt you. Come on in, Toto. Close the door. Uh-huh. If it's money you want, you've made a poor guess. We came to warn you. An Apache war party's near here. Apache? Get a message to the fort right away. Who's the operator at this station? Why, I am. I, I mean, my brother. He's sick, horribly sick. Taking a turn for the worse this afternoon. Oh, I, I see. I was just going to call Cedar Creek, ask the operator there to send a doctor when you... Can uh, you handle the key? I've been doing it every day for over two weeks. Good. Now, the first thing to do is to get a message to the fort. Tell them about the Indians. What's the next station west of here? Cottonwood, but why should I try... I mean, who I are you? I have explanations later. Hurry, call Cottonwood. Tell them to relay word to Fort Apache. Why? Right. All right. Oh. What's the trouble? It's dead. The line must be broken. I was afraid of that. Try the other direction, Cedar Creek. All right. That line's open, but nobody answers. There's a new man just went on duty there. He came through here this afternoon. Yes, yes, I know. Now, listen... Do you know anything about Apache Indians? Well, I ought to. We've been out here for over two years. And you must realize that you and your brother, all of us, in fact, are in great danger. The Apaches have a special hate for the Army's telegraph and anyone connected with it. We've got to move out while there's still time. But that's impossible. Frank's too sick to move any place. Yes, but he's... Look at him. Can't you see what I mean? Uh, yes, yes, I understand. Toto, uh, I'm going to ride to Cedar Creek and try to make it back before daybreak. You stay here and do what you can. Uh, I know a doctor in Cedar Creek, Dr. Buell. I'll bring him with me. Oh, no, no, you should risk your life Keep to help. calling Cedar Creek. Stay on the line till he answers. Adios. Wait, you can't go. Indian. Uh, I don't know who that man is, but I'm going to pray for him like I've never prayed in my life. <laughs> Did you say your name is? Buell. Dr. Buell. Oh, yeah. I'm Corporal Duncan. Just rode into town a few minutes ago. New brass pounder for this station, worse luck. Well, if you're just up from Fort Apache, Corporal, you must have passed through Stone Bluff. How's my friend Frank Prescott? Uh, Prescott? Why, uh, he was out fixing a break in the line. I talked to his sister. Oh, yes, Laura. I know her, too. I'm glad to hear that Frank's well enough to ride. He's it's not very strong. Subject to spells of fever. Oh, is that so? Uh, if he'd only take a few months off and let me treat him, he'd get rid of it. But he's bound to stay out there at Stone Bluff. Feels that his duty comes first. Well, I guess all of you signal corps men are like that. Oh, Doc, that's where you're wrong. To start with, the only reason I'm pounding brass is because I was shoved into it. See these yellow stripes on each side of my pants? Oh, yes. Regular cavalry uniform, isn't it? Sure, and that's what I am. A regulation yellow leg, a trooper. So they take me out of the saddle and put me into a rocking chair like this, pounding brass. What difference does it make? Signal Corps or Cavalry are all soldiers. And a real soldier can serve his country just as well with a telegraph key as he can with a gun. Fight just as well with a telegraph key? As... Doc, what, what made you say that? Well, it's true, isn't it? I don't know. Only that's the second time today I've heard those same words. A mass that... Wait a minute. Somebody call on the station. Wait till I answer the signal. Now, whoever's so anxious to talk can start gabbing. Oh, well, Abby, give me a pencil, quick. Here, uh, what is it? Uh, where's the message from? Stone Bluff, listen. 
Emergency. Send doctor at once. Corporal Prescott, seriously ill. Station surrounded by Apaches. Send. What's the matter? Dead. That was Laura. Her brother must be real sick. And what's more, them sneaking redskin devils are... I saw you through the window, Doctor, and I'm in a hurry. You? I didn't think you were within a hundred miles of me. The outlaw I was going to tell you about. There's an emergency case, Dr. Buell. It's Tone Bluff. I know. Laura was just on the line. Then it went dead. She said there was injured. That's right. How many, I don't know. Apaches won't attack at night. So if we can reach the station before daylight, we might be able to help. I'll get my satchel. How about you, Corporal Duncan? My horse is still saddled. Good. Let's go. Do you... Do you feel any better, Frank? I'll be all right, Laura. What time is it? Almost daylight. Oh, there's no use in lying to you, Frank. The Indians are still out there, waiting. Did you get the message through to Cedar Creek? I don't know. The line went dead. All night I've been hoping that man with the mask, the friend of this Indian, would... But I guess that was hoping for too much. No, don't. Don't cry, Laura. We'll, we'll be all right. Hear that? It's the Indian. No, no that, that's not Apache. Me, no. Oh. Steve. Laura. And Dr. Buell. Oh, yes. thank heaven. Are they made any sign, Hello. Me listen. All night. Hear Apache. Not see him. There, there. We'll know it the next minute or two. Sun just coming up. Let the buzzards come. I'm ready for them. With an army carbine. Laura. Now, this trap door. Is there a cellar beneath this cabin? Yes, but it isn't very large. I see. But it'll have to do. Doctor, we'll have to put the sick man down there. We can't risk it. Here they come. Looks like a million of them. Otto, help Dr. Buell get Prescott down into the cellar. Now, Steve, you take that window. I'll cover this one. Otto, back us up. Laura, stay down. Got another one. They're moving in closer. There's too many of them. Open the trap door, Tonto. We'll all have to go to the cellar. Those battery bottles are getting smashed to smithereens. Watch out, Laura. That acid and the gas. Yes, you'd better be careful. The hydrogen gas will... Tonto, keep firing from this window. Steve, you and I have a job to do, and it's got to be fast. What do you mean? Put down your rifle and come over here, quick. What are you going to do? Put the connections in all these battery jars. They got the zinc plates and throw them on the floor. Don't ask questions. Do as I say. It's our only chance. Makes sense to me. We ought to be holding off those redskins. Uh, instead of uh, I think that's enough. Now pour the acid from the batteries onto the plates. <coughs> Watch out, Laura. That makes gas. <coughs> it makes enough. Now, all of you, into the cellar. You go first, Laura. Hurry, Steve. I don't see how. Hurry, you... hurry. Come on, Tonto. Uh, here. Pull down the door, Tonto. Uh, Good. Hand me your carbine, Steve. There should be enough powder flash from the muzzle to... Push on our rifle barrel between this door and the floor ain't gonna stop him. It might. Here goes. I think it's safe to push up this door now. Come on. What the? The engines. Either dead or vamoose. Yes, evidently those who didn't catch the full force of the blast were scared away. What? The cabin, it's gone. I don't see how it... I can't believe it. Look, some of the battery jars are still hooked up under what's left of the table. And... Well, listen... Steve, somebody must have repaired the line between here and Cottonwood. Wait, I'm going to answer. What is it, Copper? Listen. Fort Apache to Stone Bluff. Relay to Cedar Creek. Black Bear signed. Peace Treaty. Owlhead with 30 or 40 braves rebelled. Believe to be in your territory. Please report. Steve, that means the fort doesn't know anything. I'm going to tell him. Listen. Stone Bluff to Fort Apache. Owl head and braves last seen 
Heading south. Completely routed. No help needed. How's that? Oh, wonderful, Steve. But I still don't understand how it happened. Neither do I. It had me stumped for a minute, too. And when that fellow with the mask borrowed my carbine and fired it when he raised the trap door, I figured it out. What? Those galvanic batteries are filled with sulfuric acid. We all know that. Yes. And zinc plates. When sulfuric acid touches zinc, it forms hydrogen gas. I know, Steve, but hydrogen but gas... But when hydrogen make... gas is mixed with air, like it was in this cabin, uh, when there was a cabin, that's a high explosive. All it needs to touch it off is a bit of flame, like the muzzle flash from my carbine. Oh, I think I understand it now. And if it hadn't been for that fellow with the mask standing right away... Where is he? He was here. The Indian, a... too. They've both gone. I wanted to tell him he was right about the signal corps being just as important to the Army as troopers are, especially when it comes to fighting engines. Oh. Dr. Buell, how is Frank? Frank will make out all right, I'm sure. Oh, I have so much to be thankful for. So have I. From now on, I'm going to do all my fighting with the telegraph key in the signal corps. At Cedar Creek, Corporal Duncan? That's the closest place I know to Stone Bluff. Oh, Steve. Only one thing I still can't figure. What, Steve? Who is that mask, Omri, who rides like a yellow leg, talks like a signalman, and fights like the whole blamed army? Why didn't you ask me? I could have told you long ago. He's the Lone Ranger. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 